Hi, so today we're going to be doing a what materials do I use kind of video. I recently started posting a lot using inks and before that I was only doing digital work. I have a lot more fun when I'm using traditional media versus digital media just because it's nicer to like feel what you're doing and every time you paint something it comes out totally different than what you're expecting just because of the nature of watercolor and ink it dries in a totally spontaneous way and the effects you get from it is really hard to mimic digitally so first things first I use um, a paper called BFK Reeves paper it's a printmaking paper and it's usually not meant for paint and it's a really expensive paper but I've grown to love using ink on this just because of the way the granulation looks on the paper after the ink dries. It's very beautiful and it just feels like a piece of cloth. It's almost like furry to the touch and I don't know, I always found this to be one of my favorites to use. And this type of paper is different from BFK Reeves. This one I believe is the Strathmore um, 400 paper. It has a nice texture to it. It's really really nice for color pencils. The color pencil um, grabs onto this paper very well. Compared to the BFK Reeves, I would not use color pencil on this. It would not show up at all. It would just be kind of blurry. So for BFK Reeves, I um, recommend inks, pen, and maybe Posca markers, stuff you can layer onto it. And for the Strathmore watercolor paper, I would recommend, um, well, of course, watercolor, inks, and color pencils. So the inks I use to make my pieces all go into this storage box that I bought from Daiso. The specific name of the ink I use is Daler Rowney FW Acrylic Inks. I kind of just fell in love with these inks when I started using them in class and I just never stopped. The colors I use are Process Magenta, which is a cooler red, which means it has more blue in it. This one is a Flame Red, which means it's a warmer red more yellow in it. This is indigo blue, which is a warmer blue. Um, this one is a marine blue, which has more of a green tint, so it's like a cooler type of blue. And then this one is Indian yellow, which is a warm yellow, except I, yellow is probably the first color you would run out of, just because yellow it's very light, you tend to squeeze more of it and use more of it, so I would definitely buy two yellows. What I use to mix my inks on is this paper palette pad because I could always use a ceramic bowl or something like that to mix inks, but the problem is since those are acrylic inks, it's always going to dry and it's very very hard to wash off. I've used it on plastic palettes, but because acrylic is a form of plastic, when you paint onto that plastic, it's pretty much virtually impossible to get off. So once you layer and layer and layer all that ink, you can't even tell what color you're using anymore. So for acrylic inks, I recommend this paper palette. Well, not this specific paper palette. I This is honestly just the cheapest palette because I really just need to mix the colors. This doesn't have to be expensive at all. So next, I'll be talking about watercolors. So I have two types of watercolor palettes. I have this huge Winsor & Newton. It's, I believe, the student grade one, but it still works perfectly fine. It's not that different. And then this one is a professional watercolor. I bought this one at Blix for like 40% off when they have those big sales. So that was a that was like a huge gift to me when I was I would want to say like my second year of college just because I always buy materials for school and when it's for myself it's really hard for me to splurge on something. I sadly don't use it as much anymore and I feel like I should. Sometimes I'll take specific colors and just like mix and match them in that palette, but 
Um, I usually use this for big flat washes where I can like use the huge space right here just to mix. But I really do like how beautiful this palette looks. Um, this Windsor Newton set, I actually got this from Italy. I've always wanted professional watercolors. I thought for some reason it would make my art better, which is not true. It's honestly based off practice and just having passion for it, you know? But um, I bought it anyways. It was on sale because this was a display palette, so it was kind of dinged up on the outside, but I honestly don't care about that. I really cared about the watercolors inside and at the same store, you can buy like individual colors, which is what I did. So I literally splurged all of my money on this one palette, but I honestly don't regret it because I've been using this for a lot of things and it's it's a nice, nice palette to have. This was the most expensive color and this is one of my favorite colors. It's like a Tiffany blue. Let's talk about Posca markers. So I know a lot of you really like Posca markers. A lot of you have asked me like how I use Posca markers, how I'm able to pretty much lay down flat washes without the paper ripping. And I can show you a little clip on how I do it. Um, I tend to use papers like Bristol or as I've said, I used it on BFK Reeves before and that worked fine. I think it really just has to do with consistency of your strokes and also being patient, waiting for it to completely dry and then applying the next layer because after you get over the initial layer, once it's coated with this kind of plasticky first layer, the other layers probably won't rip the paper as easily. I have three sets of Poscas. I believe I bought this set myself and then these two my boyfriend gifted me for I think it was either Christmas or my birthday but I'm really grateful for that because these two are actually the ones I use all the time and I don't even use this set anymore um, the reason why is my first set I bought the medium point tips so the medium point tips are way too thick for what I need them for I think these would be good for like crafts and like drawing on rocks and everything but for me they were too thick and these were actually the ones that were starting to ball up the paper and it made it really messy looking. So the tips that I really like are these fine tipped pens. The tip is actually almost like a plastic, like it's not a fiber tip pen like the medium size. So this way the tip doesn't get destroyed at all and it's perfect. I don't really use all these colors and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those after I finish using all of my favorite colors, but I guess that's a problem we'll have to face another day. Last material that you've all seen me use is probably these color pencils. Color pencil is always kind of weird for me. I feel like I can never get it perfectly right. I think it mainly has to do with the paper I'm using. If the paper is too soft, the colors don't really come out that great. The colors I use are Juniper Green, Dark Indigo, Walnut Brown, Pale Geranium Lake, Dark Naples, and Medium Flesh. And I just keep them in this jar. Yeah. These are my main five brushes, and I have I honestly buy way too many brushes when I was in school and I have like maybe 20 more brushes that I'm saving up for when these break but like I'm so bad at knowing when things are like in such a bad condition that it affects the artwork I just kind of try to make it work because I just don't want to let them go you know so these are the Princeton snap brushes um, I think these are like usually the brushes that students will get and these honestly work so well for my purposes. So, I mean, whatever works for you, you don't have to have like a $50 brush to make good work. It's honestly your comfort level. Like if I had a $50 brush, I probably wouldn't even use it because it's so expensive that I would be scared to use it. So these cheaper brushes will be fine. I have this round brush in size 16. It's really good for big blocky areas that are also rounded. I have 
this angler brush at 3 4 inch. Um, this is for laying flat washes, maybe like a background color or something. Um, I have a smaller angler brush, this one's half an inch. It's kind of more beaten up, so I usually use this for maybe like glazing um, pins and stuff like that. I have this round brush number four, which is my main go-to brush for painting. It's not too big, not too small. It's like the perfect size for me. And then I have this size two just for those really fine lines that I sometimes do or like dotting eyes and noses and stuff. And yeah, these are my main five brushes that I use. And I also keep these in a jar. This is my water cup. I've had this since early high school and it's really nasty on the top. There's so many memories, like this pink, this hot pink, my friend, uh, she's not an artist, but like one day she just really wanted to paint. So I gave her a pink and then she wanted to just paint the whole thing pink. So there's still like remnants of that. Um, my friend drew on this anime face a long time ago in high school. Uh, my other friend drew a constellation on the side, which is really pretty. This is honestly my favorite pouch out of every pouch I have. On here, I have a Forest Mori pin of the pencil. I absolutely fell in love with this pin. And then this patch is from Johan Studios. She's one of my favorite Taiwanese artists and she makes these adorable furry patches. So now, let's get into what's inside. So in here, I keep all of my pens. I really like using pens and incorporating it into my artwork. So the main pens I use to sketch with are these. Um, one is a Muji pen in black and I always get 0.38 size for that one. Except I know this one is discontinued. So before I left Taiwan, I bought a handful of them and they even had refills that I could purchase. And this is a Kokoroi, Kokoro, but this is also a refillable pen. Um, it's a Zig brand pen, I think. But you pretty much just unscrew this and you can replace the cartridge. I'm not really sure what size this one is specifically. This is what the cartridge looks like when it's not in the pen. And yeah, everything else is just kind of for journaling. It's not really something I use a lot. Actually, I use these. These I get from Daiso for like a dollar. Um, these are zebra pens. So next, I'll be going over sketchbooks that I've been using recently. I don't really sketch too often, but if I did, it would go into these two journals. Um, so the first one I got really, really recently, maybe like last week. I just have this Apple um, patch sticker on it nothing on the back. I'm trying to keep it really plain because it's so small. But I was thinking I would go out and paint more in this, but honestly, I've just been using it at home. So this is the only piece I currently have inside the sketchbook. It's a portrait of Annabelle or cat creature on YouTube. And yeah, she's just so pretty. So I had to draw her. And yeah, this is a moleskin watercolor sketchbook in the pocket size. Um, it was like 20 bucks and I don't know if it was worth it. I'm still debating if I like the paper or not, but I bought it so I should use it. And then this is more for just ink sketches, like with pens and stuff. This is the Midori paper um, sketchbook and I just decorated it with my favorite stickers and washi tape because it has like a transparent cover you can put over the paper, which is really nice. This is really good for ink because nothing bleeds through to the other side. The paper is very thin and you can see to the other side, but it never bleeds through. Next, let's go to cutting supplies. I don't know if anyone's interested in this, but I'll just include it anyways. So for measuring things, I always use this ruler right here. This is a see-through ruler and it's really great for lining things up. This has been the best purchase of my life and I love it to death. Um, I use this to actually cut. It's a Westcott stainless steel ruler. And the reason why I use this one to cut is because the back has cork on it. 
so it's very easy to grip onto things and your paper won't be sliding around under while you're cutting. For tiny cuts where I can stabilize the ruler with my fingers, um, I just use this. This is the knife that I currently use. Uh, this was my dad's for a long time. He said it was like a Japanese brand or something. It's NT Cutter A300. But yeah, this is such a nice knife and I just love the color. It's Tiffany blue and it's like, it's just me, you know? And last but not least, my digital stuff. So everything before I've been talking about has been traditional materials and this is pretty much all I use now for digital drawings. Um, I got this iPad maybe a year ago when I think it's been out for half a year or more and I finally caved and bought it because I heard a lot of good things about it and this was such a huge purchase for me because before that, the biggest purchase I made was my laptop for school, which is a MacBook. And I paid for maybe half of that in high school and my parents um, paid for the rest of it, which I'm very grateful for. And so when, I, when it came to this iPad, I was very scared to ask them for things, or I still am very scared to ask my parents for things because I feel like if I can afford it on my own and it's something that I need, I will try my best to use my own money to buy it. Um, so yeah, I pretty much bought this maybe third year of college and it changed my life. It made sketching for pieces so much easier and finalizing things really fast for classes uh, a lot faster. So the case I have on it right now is a spec case. It looks like that. And this is a very sturdy case. So the app that I use to draw on the most is Procreate. Um, this is pretty much all I need. It's a very intuitive app. You're able to do almost everything you need in a very simple like simplified way it's pretty much like photoshop but like for beginners but like even professionals use it that's how i would describe it but um let's see so i have everything like sectioned off into different categories like i have some client work there youtube thumbnails client work um work work I have, these are like personal works from 2019. I like to section them off into years just so it's easier to find. These are all my draw this in your style submissions that I've done for other people. I think this one's one of my favorites. This is like kind of where I found myself again in my work. I have a folder of just studies, which means like I looked at a picture for reference or I was drawing a friend or something. And what I use is this Apple Pencil. I know it doesn't look like an Apple Pencil, but um, I just have a decal on it. It's a Staedtler decal and it's really fun, really cool. And yeah, works well. Maybe in a few years, I'll have an updated video where I use completely different materials because I like to change up my materials just because it keeps things interesting for me. I'm not the type of person that likes to sit on one thing for too long. I'm very impatient when it comes to making stuff. So I always love to experiment and, you know, play with new materials. Uh, by all means, you don't need to buy new materials to make good work. Because I know I've always gotten stuck in that where I would say like, oh, I'm in an art block right now. Maybe if I bought a new pen, I would be able to draw better or like be more inspired again. But it's totally not based on what materials you're using. It's for me, it's based on all the experiences I've had as a person and just, you know, having fun. Thanks for watching my video. I hope this was kind of helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions about my materials and anything else, you can always just drop it down below. Um, yeah.
see you soon. Bye.